And we're moving on to the main event here with Kamaru Usman defending his title against um, Gilbert Burns. We got a 170-pound title fight here. Uh, Kamaru Usman hoping to defend his title for the third time, going up against a former training partner in uh, Gilbert Burns. Both guys were down there at Sanford MMA. And I just saw something today saying that Kamaru Usman was looking to make the change of training camps even before this whole Gilbert Burns thing came, came up, which uh, makes it a little bit more interesting because I thought he left Sanford MMA just to allow Gilbert Burns, who's more than often in the corners of the Sanford MMA guys, he seems a little bit more dialed in with the coaching. So uh, Usman was just like, you know what? I'll step away. I'll go to a different camp. But it seems like, uh, and from the way he was talking about it, it seemed as though he wanted to get a camp that he could be a little bit more of the focus and not have 150 guys that are in the camp and you have to you know, share time with all these other guys. You're at the top of your game. You want to get the best level of training and you want to get the most level of focus. And I think he could... You know, he couldn't have done much better than a guy like Trevor Whitman, one of the best coaches in the game right now, doesn't have a huge stable of guys like he has Justin Gaethje, he has Rose Nama Yunus, I think Eddie Alvarez is spending time over there a little bit now too, but I do like what we're seeing from Usman in terms of the camp that he chose to go to. Not to mention, it's going to allow him to really round out his game and the striking aspect, as I believe that's the weakest part of his game, even though we've been seeing improvements from it. Going to a guy like Trevor Whitman will only help him, so I'm really looking forward to that that aspect from it as well, too. Uh, Kamar Usman, obviously heavy favorite now. We are seeing a little bit of money come in on Gilbert Burns. We got minus 275 for the champion, plus 235 on Gilbert Burns, and... I feel like we get people that are on one side or the other and extreme on one side or the other. And I'm trying to dial myself back a little bit because I truly believe that Usman is one of the best fighters in this division and probably one of the best fighters ever. Like given his style, his pace, his pressure, his wrestling acumen, and the fact that he has the ability to keep it up for 25 minutes is very, very impressive. Like there's guys that have all those skill sets, but just can't can't keep it consistent throughout the fight, but you got that in Kamar Usman. Another guy that has that is Colby Covington, which is why I think he's the only guy that truly has a threat here to dethrone Kamar Usman. And even though he beat him in the last fight, I feel like if that fight was to happen 100 times, it might be 60-40 Kamaru, 55-45 Kamaru. But here with Gilbert Burns, I think he's the second biggest threat to Kamaru Usman. You throw into the, the X factor that, uh, you know, they've sparred over 200 rounds together. But a lot of people keep looking at at that from the Gilbert Burns aspect. Like, oh, Gilbert knows what his weaknesses are. Don't you think that it works the other way too? (laughs) Like, obviously, Usman knows what the weaknesses of Burns' uh, Burns game is if they've sparred over 200 rounds, right? Um, I also think that people are really overblowing how good Gilbert Burns has looked in his last two fights. Don't get me wrong. Impressive performances. Went out there and did what he was supposed to do. But knocking out a 45-year-old Damian Maia or 42-year-old Damian Maia, great. That That looks amazing. Sure. Tyron Woodley dominates him for five rounds. <laughs> Come on. We know what, what, what Tyron Woodley's game is. He's like the Abdul Razak al If he's not able to get you out in those first couple of rounds, the guy's just going to concede and just he'll always have that burst of energy for the first 30 or 45 seconds of the round listening to his coaches and saying, you know, the coaches are yelling at him. Dean Thomas and all these guys are yelling at him like, dude, you got to move forward. You got to start throwing. You got to get your wrestling game going. He's like, yeah, I got, I got it. I got it. I got it. And then what happens? He sticks to it for like 30, 45 seconds and then he's just backing up backing up, backing up, waiting to unload that bomb. And he telegraphs it so much that Gilbert Burns is able, able to get out of the way of it and then land his own good shots and get some good things going for himself too. Now, I'm not trying to completely discredit Gilbert Burns. The guy's made improvements. It's obvious. He came into the UFC mainly as a jiu-jitsu guy. Henry Hooft has really rounded out his striking game and it's definitely showing in his last two fights. But again, those guys are not the level of Kamaru Usman. This is a completely different beast that he's going up against. Um, I will... I'm okay with the fact that people are taking the shot at Burns uh, at that plus 235 range, but I think that this is one of those spots where it's just like the favorite might actually be, you know, deserving of this high price tag. Personally, I'd even put Kamar Usman up at like minus 400 as I truly think that he goes out there and has a quintessential Kamar Usman type performance. Like people are blinded by his Colby Covington fight. Like, oh, he's an exciting fighter now. Uh, no. He can still go out there and have those Jorge Masvidal type performance where he's just pushing you up against the cage, foot stomping you, taking you down, getting you back up, and just rinse and repeat, just overpowering you. And I think that's what he's going to be able to do here against Gilbert Burns. Now, the only thing that kind of gives me pause about Kamar Usman is that narrative out there that his knees are just completely shot, right? The guy has no cartilage left between his knees, and his, he, he doesn't even do any road work because it's just too bad for his knees. But I truly feel like the, the way that he's compensating for it by training in other aspects will allow for him to make up for it and still perform at a very high level. You're just going out there for 25 minutes. You know, I mean, check a couple leg kicks, hopefully, and, and uh, you know, keep the fight in, in a range where Gilbert Burns is not dangerous. 
Davis, um, which is, you know, the the mainly the striking range. I see, I think we'll see Kamaru push him up against the cage, get some time out there, really start to wear on Burns, and then look to get this fight down later in the fight because you don't want it nice and early when Gilbert Burns is dry and has all of his energy and can get his jiu-jitsu black belt going to a high level. But I think we know that Kamaru has seen that in the in the in the sparring room. We know what he thinks uh, Gilbert Burns's trick moves are, or what his little tricks up his sleeve that he has is, right? So I think Usman has him almost beat everywhere. Um, I think that uh, a knockout of Gilbert Burns is a possibility. I'd give him the slight advantage on the feet in terms of power and technique at this point in time, but it is an ever-evolving game for Kamaru Usman, especially given the fact that he's now with Trevor Whitman as well, too. So the spot that I'm chasing is the Kamaru Usman decision, plus 100, uh, even money line there. You're pretty much betting up Kamaru Usman at, at that line there. Um, my one concern also with that decision prop is I have some questions about Gilbert Burns' uh, cardio as well, too. We saw him start to gas a little bit late in the Alexei Kachenko fight, but I will cut him a little bit of slack considering he only came in on 10 days' notice for that fight. His first fight at 170 pounds as well, too. He's definitely gotten comfortable at this weight class, but he's never dealt with the pace and pressure of a guy like Usman in live action, in an actual fight. And that's where my question comes with, will Burns be able to handle them for 25 minutes? I'm not 100% sure, but I do feel much better with the decision prop here than actually Kamaru inside the distance. So I'll go Kamaru inside the distance, plus 100. One of my favorite plays on a very iffy card, in my opinion, and where we have uh, high, high favorites like Bilal Muhammad and Rodolfo Vieira. I think that Kamaru Usman is one of the more safer guys when you're talking about, even in DraftKings as well, in that 9,000 range, I think he's one of the safer guys out there. And I think we see him go out there and win a decision. Are you with me? I, I'm completely with you. I think Kamara Usman is if it let's okay, let's sit down and we're gonna go to build a bear. Only it's a build a fighter, right? We're gonna we're gonna build a perfect fighter here. So we, we need a guy that's got cardio for sure. That's the most important thing you can have in MMA. We need a guy that has cardio. Okay, Kamara Usman, he checks the box. He's got I want I want cardio like Kamara Usman for my bear. This guy goes for 25 minutes all day. You've seen him fight at 30% and still dominate the man, <laughs> killer to both. As the 30% Kamara Uzman, the guy's got cardio for days. Okay, I love it. Okay, well, we need a guy that can wrestle. Okay, look no further. This guy's a former, you know, um, he's a former champion in college. He didn't wrestle D1. He's not a D1 All-American. He's not a national champion, but he's like one of these junior college guys, one of these D2 guys. And wrestling is the kind of sport that the best D2 guy can hang with some of the best D1 guys. It's just a sport that you don't always end up at a D1 school. Regardless, his wrestling top-notch. You look at it, how his wrestling translates to MMA. Yeah, top notch. Look at a D1 guy like Colby Covington. Is he going out there and taking him down? No, no, no. His wrestling is top notch. If I'm building a bear, I'm building a fighter. I want wrestling like Kamaru Usman. Striking. Well, geez, Kamaru Usman can't strike. First of all, the guy's got a freakishly long reach. Okay, he's got nice, crisp, te technical hands. His ring IQ is just such good, so good that he doesn't have to stand and strike with these guys. Why did he stand and, stri and, and strike with Colby Covington? Well, two reasons, right? Reason number one, he hated Colby Covington. He had a serious chip on his shoulder. This guy's talked a lot of shit. I don't want to just go out there and win a decision. I could probably go out there and try to grind him the way I grind other guys. I want to hurt this man. I want to break this man's jaw. I want to finish this guy. So you see him fight just like a complete different animal. But the other thing was, he couldn't do to Colby Covington what he had done to other guys, and that's press him up against the cage and take him down. Colby Covington's takedown defense was too good. His pressure was too good. His cardio was really good as well. So he had to fight a completely different game than he's used to, than he wants to, and he still thrives. Well, what about his chin? Well, Colby hit him. Colby's not the biggest power puncher going. But Colby hit him with some tremendous hot, hot heat. And this guy just shakes it off. In the fifth round of that fight, he's laughing at Colby. He's broken Colby. Colby's the cardio king, and he's toppling over. And I back Colby in that fight. And Kamara really showing you that outside of George St. Pierre, there is not another welterweight that's fought in the UFC. There's not another welterweight that's fought on the planet that has got the absolute full package skill set that Kamara Usman has. And as I mentioned, on top of all that, he has the ring IQ. So I'm building my fighter. I've got, if I had cardio like Kamara Usman, wrestling like Kamara Usman, uh, ring IQ like Kamara Usman, a chin like Kamara Usman. And you know, the one thing that's failed him in his career was, oh man, what about that time, uh, you know, he got submitted on the regional scene in Florida, rear naked choke, gave his back. Well, you know what? He's so smart. He's so intelligent. He went and linked up with guys like Gilbert Burns to show him a thing or two about stopping submissions. And now all of a sudden, it's like he has it all. Now, people will say, how can you say he's a nearly perfect fighter? He's a boring decision machine. You guys all said the same thing about GSP. Why is, he, why is GSP not going out and finishing Jake Shields or Josh Koscheck or Dan Hardy? It's because he's so smart and he's such a, a level above these guys. He doesn't need to. He can just go and dominate them. And to a lesser extent, Khabib's finishing guys recently. 
But people all knocked on him about how boring he is because he would go in and he would dominate guys. That's what you're getting in Kamaru Uzma. The only real knock that I can think of is he's 33. And like you said, he's he's getting some injuries are starting to mount up on him. But he's a 4-1 to one favorite in any world that you could possibly live in, apparently outside of this one, where you can get him at minus 280. It just seems crazy. So I think he wins this fight. I think he goes out there. I think he does exactly what he did against, say, George Monsvidal or the exact same thing he did against any other the Tyron Woodley fight. He can just outgrapple you up against the cage, pull you to the ground. Now, people will scream, you can't do that against Gilbert Burns. His jiu-jitsu is so good. You can't. No, no, no. Gilbert Burns, there was a time where his jiu-jitsu was second to none. But if you want to be an MMA fighter, you can't just be a jiu-jitsu guy. You need all the skills. And that's one thing Burns has done exceptionally well. He's added all the other skills. He's become a great striker. He spent a lot of time with Henry Hoof and what was the Black Zillions? And then eventually, uh, well, it's now Stanford MMA. What was the one in between? Hard Knocks 365? Hard Knocks Knocks, Knocks 365. It's like he's followed Henry Hoof around this entire time and he spent a lot of time working on his striking. But as he works on his striking, the ground game is taking a back seat. And when was the last time he's gone out there and and submitted a guy in just like a spectacular fashion? Oh man, look at this grappling. It's on, it's on full display. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. You know, he's actually mostly just beating these guys by decision now. So he looked like a world beater against Tyron Woodley. No, he didn't. Everybody looks like a world beater against Tyron Woodley. We were all on Burns by Burns by decision. It was a nice plus money price tag. Woodley's done, right? The fight with Damian Maya, it's a four-year-old fighter. You caught with a punch, because again, you've been working on your striking. You've seen him compete in some grappling matches, right? He couldn't finish Kazushi Sakuraba last year. 47-year-old Kazushi Sakuraba. He couldn't finish him. Okay, that's fine. You know, Tommy Lang- Langacker is a total G. Couldn't finish him. Gunnar Nelson, well, he knows BJJ. Couldn't finish him. Alexa Kachenko, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, he tired in that fight and couldn't finish him. All right. He beat Mike Davis two years on ago. On short notice. Mike Davis took the fight on a week's notice. He's a primary a kickboxer. He's like a 6-1 to underdog, right? He submitted him. Like that that's that's the only submission win that he's had in the UFC uh, in five years. That's the only submission win he's had in the UFC in five years. Okay, so you take this guy who's not submitting anybody at the UFC level, right? Well, that his godly jiu-jitsu, which again is not is not yielding submission results. This guy's gonna submit Karim Usman, no fat chance. And what's even more of a fat chance is that Karim Usman's had the two hundred rounds with him. And so this goes back to Ryan Hall, right? Um, Ryan Hall's jiu-jitsu is phenomenal, right? He inventor the 50-50 guard. He loves to take the back. Once he takes your back, he'll just backpack you. Doesn't have to move from there. He loves to switch for the leg. He's a very, very tricky, unorthodox grappler. He runs right through the ultimate fighter, wins the ultimate fighter. And now nobody wants to fight him in the UFC because they're like, I just can't really solve the puzzle. And it does nothing for me to try to fight this guy I don't want. Uriah Faber, right? Uriah Faber is his coach on the ultimate fighter and then brings him a team alpha male to kind of teach some jiu-jitsu for a little bit. He puts it best himself. He goes, the first time, the first five times I rolled with Ryan Hall, I was like, holy shit. And then every time after that, it was just like, oh, oh, I know it's coming. I know the setup. The more you work with a high-level grappler, the more he's going to show you, this is my move. This is my go-to. Then you're going to talk to him and your friends and, well, how do you defend your go-to? Well, this is what you would do. This is how you get out of the guillotine choke. Guys will try to set it up like this, or they'll try to set up like this, or they'll try to set up like this. And this is what you do to all three of them. Guy throws up an armbar, this is what you're going to do. You roll with this guy day in and day night. So you you start to get a beat on what he's going to do. Okay, that guy who submitted one guy in the last five years in the UFC, that guy who you know all of his moves, his only path to victory is snatching up the submission. And I just think it's such a small likelihood. So what this comes down to is Kamaro wins, but does Kamaro finish him at some point because Burns gets tired? Burns notoriously has bad cardio, right? Didn't rear its ugly head against Tyron Woodley because Tyron and I try to do nothing. But if you push a pace on him, it'll fall apart. Usman could finish him. But the X factor here is that they are friends. And if you, if I knew for certain Gilbert Burns owed Kamara Usman 20 bucks, I'm digging Usman inside the distance. But because they've gone on record being like our daughters play together and Kamara's the champ. He left his own gym. When have you ever seen champ challenger, same gym, the champ leaves? My take on that greasy theory my take on that is Kamaru's a 3-1 favorite. Kamaru's wrestled this guy a million times. Kamaru's sparred with this guy a million times. Kamaru's grabbed with this guy. Kamaru knows he's going to win. The coaching staff's going to win. The training partners know he's going to win. So if you stay at the gym, right, it gives you no real benefit. You're still going to win. And it alienates Gilbert Burns, who's a friend to everybody here. He's been he's followed us from Black Zillions to Hard Knocks 365. He's a part of the team, man. He's a part of the family. If we alienate him and say, you go somewhere else, he may not come back. He may feel like my team chose Uzma. 
Whereas if Usman goes to Denver for a camp and everybody around Burns, oh yeah, Gil, you got this, you know, go out there, do your thing, and you lose, you still come back to the gym. Everyone pats you on the back. Kamaru comes back, you squash the beef, it's over. They don't think they want to alienate him. So they let him train there. And ultimately, it's a decision loss incoming for Gilbert Burns. It's MMA. Anything can happen. Punch could land. Kick could land. Submission could land. All that stuff. But we got to analyze what's the most likely outcome in a one singular fight. One off. We're not fighting 100 times. We're not simulating 1,000 times. What's the most likely outcome in a one off? The most likely outcome is Kamara Usman by unanimous decision. I'm right there with you. And this is giving me shades of like when GSP was going up against a new challenger. Everybody's trying to make their case that this guy's going to go out there and dethrone this guy. And, you know, Usman is on his way to get to GSP status if he continues to win all these fights. And that's hard for me to say as a Canadian. Yeah, I mean, you, you want to say that GSP is a GOAT, but like Usman is putting together a very solid resume at this point in time and arguably against tougher competition than what GSP had to go up against in the past. But I truly think that this is a solid spot for Usman.